is a story of a man named Brady. When I first drove through Newberry Park in Ventura County, it seemed to me like the suburbs from the Brady Bunch. It's perfect. Spanish-style villas with front lawns as green as golf courses, kids racing to the mall on their skateboards after soccer practice, and brand new cars everywhere. A single-family home in this neighborhood ranges from $250,000 to $2.2 million. It's next to Thousand Oaks. It's a rich suburb, and you can feel it. And yet, there is something profoundly unsuburban hiding under the surface at the Conejo Creek condos. Everyone that lives there calls them Las Casitas. Casitas means small homes. But the casitas look more like mansions. They're huge. When you come through casitas, you can just see a big house. My name is America Yarezma Nava Villanueva. Hi, EJ. America teaches the kids in the neighborhood at the community center. She's from central Mexico, Michoacan, and lived here since she was four years old. Everybody has their own little garden, kids playing outside. The houses look like they're pretty much suburban houses. Just like everything else in Newberry Park. It's what looks like to be a big house, but it's actually divided into four homes. There's a lot more people living in one small space. Las Casitas is a tract housing development with 135 big-looking houses or buildings for a total of 540 apartments. When you open one of those doors in Las Casitas, you see a completely different world, a living style that is truly just based on necessity. That's Hugo Martinez. He's an architect and urban designer. He studied at Columbia University. He also grew up in Las Casitas. He says that Las Casitas was designed to be affordable by being higher density than the surrounding areas. Las Casitas are individually owned and are part of a homeowners association. The people that actually live here just share this one unit and anywhere from like eight, ten, sometimes even more people in one unit. If you have four of them, you have 40 people in one house. Now that's high density taken to the hyper level. The people of Las Casitas commute to the city nearby. Thousand Oaks to work as landscapers, housekeepers, babysitters, janitors, cashiers, but they can't afford to live or rent in Thousand Oaks. Thousand Oaks has very strict zoning laws that don't allow high density living. So the workers of Thousand Oaks have spilled over to the neighborhood of Newberry Park, and you get Las Casitas. Hola, Navia, ¿cómo está? 50 year old Navia Ortiz came from a rural village in Guatemala 18 years ago. She left her five kids behind and struggled making only $50 a week as a housekeeper in Thousand Oaks. I rented a piece of floor in a living room. It cost me $150 a month. She said Las Casitas gave her a second life. She was welcomed instantly. She had a roof over her head in a nice area. All the couches were taken. I would throw a cover on the floor and sleep. The only problem was the nights when my roommates got drunk. Sometimes they got so drunk that I was sleeping and I wake up to someone peeing on my head. (laughs) It was hard living, but Navia sees it as a rite of passage into Las Casitas. Navia shows me every corner of her place. The couches where people sleep, the closets, the bathroom, the bedrooms, and even under the stairs where there's a mattress. From that spot on the floor 10 years ago, she worked herself up to a place on the couch, then to a mattress under the stairs, then to a shared bedroom, and finally, she got her name on the lease. She pays $1,300 a month and sublets to eight people. Over the last 10 years, that's a lot of people. Oh, I have rented to a lot of people. 70, 80 people that come as immigrants. For Navia, renting to and helping recently arrived immigrants, especially those from her native Guatemala, is her life's path. It's almost a calling. When they begin the journey, I support them. I buy them clothes, food, and give them a month of rent. We live here all together, like bees in a pot, tight but happy. If they don't have, I give them, and like that, we help each other. But even just the few hours I was inside, it wasn't easy. It's a house full of strangers sharing every inch. It's cluttered, chaotic, and unpredictable. 
Some people might even call it dangerous. Despite myths, there's nothing inherently unsafe about higher density living. Again, high density living means a lot of people in a little bit of space. And Rick Cole, the former city manager of Ventura, explains it. A lot of the things that we've gotten ourselves worked up about in the beginning of the 21st century really are artificial. In fact, in America, that's how people lived before the automobile. They lived close to where they worked, sometimes above the store, sometimes behind the store. And even the wealthy people didn't live very far from the lower income people because they all needed to work together. Having more compact development can work just fine. Um, American society, if it's going to fulfill its promise of equal opportunity, we need to have connections and bridges uh, between people of all incomes, all backgrounds, because we're really all in this together. I asked my dad why he would choose to come here and live that way. That's America, who grew up here. And his answer was just, it's affordable. But if you're around long enough, you see that it isn't just about affordability. The community is tight-knit, safe, it's lush and green, surrounded by mountains. In the neighborhood, everyone says hello to each other. There's a pool, a produce truck with local products from Mexico and Central America. The neighborhood has the ease of life in a village. In fact, most of the 4,000 residents in the neighborhood are not from cities. They come from villages. They stay in Las Casitas because it feels like home. You come here because people do understand you. They speak your language, and all you want to do is just work. You feel comfortable, even if you're living in that kind of situation. The architect Hugo Martinez says, as you do better, your space gets better. And maybe the couch costs you 150 bucks. Then later, as you evolve and become more comfortable, get more money, then you move up maybe in the stairs. Change happens in tiny increments. Maybe you find someone, a colleague from work, they share a room. Ugo even built a partition wall to have more privacy. And maybe in the future you actually do go get your own unit in Las Casitas, and then you're on the lease. From that point you just rent it and then you move out of here. Ugo thinks it's an ingenious self-created system, and it helps immigrants feel in a very tangible way that they're living the American dream. And then, then you go into your cookie-cutter home, so now you move up kind of to the ultimate level, right? The American dream, by your own home. By your own home. That's what Ugo did. Even though he grew up in Las Casitas, now he owns a big house in Thousand Oaks, seven miles away. But for Navia and America, Las Casitas isn't a starting point. It's a destination. They love it here. I did grow up in the American dream. I, I definitely think I did. The pool nearby the house, the bus that would drop me off at school and pick me up, very clean homes and easygoing people, lots of kids to play with. Las Casitas? Las Casitas, it's so beautiful. You go outside, everyone knows you. It's clean, there is no violence. I don't want to live anywhere, but here in Las Casitas, in every park. For KCRW, this is Ana Yancy Diaz-Cortez. Thank you for coming.